Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Fion and I'm going to be teaching you how to learn Russian from scratch. Uh, I studied Russian at university for four years, graduated last year, and I think it's a brilliant language, very difficult, um, but really lovely. And I really want to teach other people how to learn it as well. Um, so just a quick note, uh, this isn't going to be like a touristy approach of just learning a couple of phrases here and there and a couple of words uh, that you can kind of say. This is really going to, my lessons are going to delve into the grammar, how to construct sentences and how to um, have a really good solid grounding in the language so that you can become fluent from there. Um, so just a quick overview of how I'm going to structure my lessons. Uh, I'm going to focus on kind of generally a new topic each lesson or um, a subtopic um, and I'm going to include a lot of tasks for you to do. So when you hear me say that there's a task, I just want you to pause the lesson, uh, go through what you've learned so far in the lesson and then complete the task and then play the video and watch me reveal the answers and pronounce, pronounce the words. Uh, I think this is going to be a useful approach because it just allows you to really solidify that information in your mind and practice. You know, I don't want this to be a case of me just lecturing um, grammar rules at you, you know, you really need to get involved and practice for yourself. That's how you're going to learn the language. <clears throat> um, I'm also going to include some homework sections at the end so that you can, again, just go over what you've learned in the lesson um, and solidify that. Just uh, as well, I think with my lessons, it's very useful. Um, to kind of memorize all of the vocabulary in a slide before moving on to the next slide, because how it goes is I'll be building on all of the vocabulary and all of the things that you learn. So, uh, for instance, we're going to learn the alphabet very briefly at the beginning of this lesson. I'm not going to go into great detail because I think, um, well, I'll explain that, but I think other people have done it. Uh, Russian native speakers have done tutorials on that and they've done it really well. And, you know, I don't see the need for me to go through that with you um, when that there are lots of other good resources. Um, so yeah, so after that slide with the alphabet, I'm going to expect you to know the alphabet, to be familiar with it and to be able to read in Russian. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to take like an easy approach. I'm going to take a, this is the information, you learn this, and then we move on. Um, just because there's a lot to get through with Russian. And I know that this might not, it's not an easy language at all. Um, which yeah leads on to my second point, which is um, if you haven't learned a language before, like a foreign language, I kind of would advise you to to start with something maybe a bit easier, like Spanish, Italian, French, something like that. Um, because it's if you're an English native speaker, I mean, um, just because Russian can be demotivating at times, it's very complex, it's very difficult, and it takes a long time to learn. And even when you've been learning for years, you know, you may not still be able to, I mean, understand what other people are saying. It's very difficult. Um, that said, I'm going to do my very best to get you to a really good level. Um, I'm going to show you all the tricks that I've learned over the years and how how I've learned Russian um, <clears throat> and how you can do. Uh, so if you're really passionate about learning Russian, then you're absolutely in the right place. I'm going to do my best to to help you and I hope, I really hope that these are going to be useful. Um, if you have any questions or you would rather that I did something differently in a lesson or, you know, I didn't explain anything well, uh, please do let me know in the comments and I will be more than happy to go over that with you in the next lesson or to just comment, um, reply to your comment. So just a quick overview of what we're going to do in this lesson. We're going to take a really brief look at the alphabet um, and then we're going to go on to nouns and adjectives uh, and then I'm going to show you some useful online resources for learning Russian which have really helped me um, to progress and then I'm going to show you my favorite Russian language books uh, which I would really really recommend for you to buy if you're serious about learning the Russian language. Then I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the lessons to come and how I've structured them um, and what you can expect from this series of videos. So with that said, let's get started. You're going to need a pen and a notebook um, <clears throat> and a willingness to learn. <laughs> OK, here we go. Right, so here I'm not really going to go through this uh, or spend too much time on this because there are lots of other great YouTube tutorials on how to write in Russian and how to pronounce the alphabet. 
And I just think that, you know, why cover something that has already been covered very well in other places? So I'll post links to that. Hopefully you can go there and, you know, learn, learn the alphabet and then come back to this lesson and continue. That said, I will now just quickly read through the alphabet and then we can move on. OK, so we've got A, B, V, G, D, Y, Y, Z, Z, I, I, краткая, K, L, N, N, O, P, R, S, T, U, F, H, C, Ч, Ш, Ш, У, Э, Ю, Я. All right. Um, so hopefully you will have either gone to another tutorial or just um, had a look at this and you're familiar with the letters uh, because for the rest of the lesson, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you're familiar with the alphabet. So just a quick overview of grammar terms um, for those who aren't familiar with learning uh, another language. Um, verbs are words that are actions, so to eat, to sleep, to talk, um, and they're very important in, in a sentence and they're very different in Russian to how they are in English. Next we've got adverbs. Uh, these are simply words that describe verbs. So quickly, carefully, um, you know, I ate slowly or I talked uh, joyously or you know so on and so forth um, so you can think of it as adding something to the verb um, then we've got nouns uh, again very important and very different in Russian uh, so these are generally objects such as car food or England but they can also be abstract like an idea or a thought so in Russian nouns change according to not only their number, but how they're used in the sentence. This is called cases. Um, and that's something that I will do a lot of lessons on because it's very difficult to, to grasp as, as a non-native Russian, Russian learner. Um, so we've got pronouns. Uh, these are just kind of their nouns, but they're, they're personal. Well, these ones that I've listed here are called personal pronouns. Um, and they're I, you, he, she, it, we, you, plural, and they. Uh, so these are kind of, this is like the lit, the order in which we learn how a verb changes. Um, but again, we'll go into that in much greater detail later on. All you need to know for now is that these are, these are called pronouns. Um, then we've got adjectives. Uh, these just describe nouns. So soft, light, dark, anything that makes a noun more detailed is going to be uh, an adjective. Um, and in Russian, uh, in English, adjectives are quite straightforward, thankfully. Um, but in Russian, they have to agree with the noun, which is something that we will be touching on today, uh, briefly introducing you to that concept. And then, then we'll build on that more in later lessons. Uh, and then lastly, we've just got this simple English sentence structure. Um, so in English, word order is very important for uh, expressing the meaning of a sentence. So for instance, the girls played football. Uh, the girls are the subject, and we know that because of where they are in the sentence. Played is the verb uh, because it's the action, and then football because it comes at the end. Uh, so if it was football played the girls, it would not really make sense, and it would be a, it, each um, word would have a different meaning. Um, whereas in Russian, it's I mean, again, we'll definitely go into this in greater detail, but all you need to know now is just what these equivalents are in English. So you is the subject, gave is the verb, the cup is the object, and to the guest is an indirect object. So that's if you're doing, if the object is going somewhere else or being done to something else. Um, but you don't really have to know or have a firm grasp on this at the moment because it will all become clear the more and more you practice and the more and more you learn. So let's move on from here. So here we just have some basic vocabulary. Um, I'm going to try and introduce you to more and more vocabulary as we go on and introduce lists in every lesson so that you just build on your knowledge of the Russian language. Um, so here we have the first word um, is privet. 
Privet, and that means hey. Um, it's a bit easier, I thought, to include this than Zdrasvitsu, which is the normal word for hello. Privet is more casual and it's kind of just easier and more common. So Privet, Privet. Then we've got a very common word, which I'm sure you already know. Uh, da means yes, da, da. Then we've got Niet, again, very well known, meaning no, Niet. Okay, and then... Um, then we've got Morjet Buits. Morjet Buits. Uh, this is quite a tricky letter for English speakers to pronounce the Buits. It's very low. Um, I'm sure if you went to another tutorial to go through the alphabet, you would have noticed them probably spending a lot of time on this letter because it's so uh, different from anything that we know in English. Um, so just try to repeat Morjet Buits. Boits. It's really low in your voice. Boits. Uh, and that means maybe. It literally translates to it can be. Morjet. It can. Boits. To be. Um, the next one after that is spesiba. 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 Um, just a quick note on pronunciation. The O in Russian when the stress doesn't land on it. So you can see here that the stress is landing on the E, spesiba. And when it doesn't land on the O, the O is pronounced more like an A. So you might notice I'm saying spesiba, ba, instead of spesibo. Um, so that's just like a thing to remember. Um, and then, so that kind of is relevant to this next word, which is ktor, ktor, meaning who. Uh, and because the stress, it has nowhere else to land but on the O here, um, it's going to be kto, not kta. You know, it's going to be kto. Then the one after that is sto, meaning what? Sto. Okay. So then here we have another uh, kind of pronunciation uh, thing that I wanted to note, which is that this letter for ch, I'm sure you have come to know it as ch. Um, but when it's in this position and in a few other positions which we'll come across, it's actually pronounced more like sh. So more like that weird W that we came across. Um, so it's pronounced sto, sto, kto, sto. And then the last one we have here is gdie, gdie, meaning where. So we've got privet, da, niet, možet buits. Спасибо. Кто? Что? Где? Okay, hopefully that's clear. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. So now we're going to discuss nouns. Um, nouns in Russian are, as I've mentioned, very different to in English, not just because of how they look um, and how they sound, but because of the way that they're used. Um, so we're just going to have a brief introduction into nouns and we're going to learn their base form. So when you learn a noun or when you look up a noun in the dictionary, for instance, um, you're going to see what is called the nominative case. Nominative case, okay? Uh, that's kind of the base form of the noun and you can change it from there and that's again that's something that we're going to go over in later lessons. So for now I'm just going to show you um, their kind of base form um, and we'll just have a quick look at adjectives as well because that's very important here. Okay, so here we have two nouns and two adjectives. Uh, the first is mamient, mamient meaning moment, so quite similar. All of these are quite similar to their English counterparts. Um, so again, with that pronunciation, because the stress falls on the E, you're going to want to pronounce that O as more of an A, mamient. Ma, mie, n, t. And then again with the E, it's going to be more of a Y, E. So really try to draw out that ma, mie, mie, n, t. Okay, and then in the plural, uh, it's that really deep U sound. So we've got ma, mie, n, t, And then uh, document, meaning documents. Again, the O is going to be more of an A, and you're going to want to draw out that Y, document. Uh, and then in the plural, it's going to be documentary. Documentary. Now onto the adjectives. We've got seriously for serious. 
seriously. So quite a few difficult letters that we can unpack here. Um, we've got that soft sign, which kind of makes the E in ser um, just very slightly different. So you probably won't notice anything at first because um, the changes to the letters are quite subtle, um, but it's going to be more of a se, ser, ser instead of sie, ser, ser yo, and then we've got that uh, e with the two dots over, which is going to be a yo, yo. It's always going to be pronounced yo, ser yo zni, ser yo zni, ser yo zni, and the Two dots means that that is where the stress lands in the word. Uh, seriously. And then in the plural, it's going to be seriously. And remember to really articulate that ending because that's going to distinguish um, what it is that the adjective is describing. So if it's, um, you know, the delicious uh, or yeah, delicious pie, for instance. Um, then the ending of the equivalent ending in Russian is going to be different if the pie is pies in plural um, and how you're going to know that is by the endings so it's really important to get used to trying to really enunciate it well um, I hope that makes sense so seriously remember to pronounce that y seriously Okay, and then we've got interesting here. Uh, the next one is interesantly. 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 And in the plural, that's going to be interesantly. Interesantly. Okay. Um, so just one last thing. Uh, in Russian, Nouns and adjectives are kind of like buddies, um, so they're gonna they're gonna be in agreement. It's what's called agreeing. So the adjective has to agree with the noun, and what that means is um, the noun. Uh, well, the adjective changes. It can be feminine, or it can be masculine, or it can be neuter. But the noun only has one gender. So. Um, so the adjective always has to be, so here it's in the masculine and it has to stay in the masculine to agree with the masculine nouns. So this will become more clear as we look at some other gendered nouns um, and how the adjectives change to agree with them. Okay. Please do let me know if anything is unclear, uh, just write in the comments and I'll try to clarify um, in the next lesson or in the comments for you. OK, so here we're just going to build on that idea of agreement. Um, so we're just going to put together the forms of the ver or, sorry, the forms of the nouns and adjectives that we just learned. Uh, so here we have interesting moment. Just note that moment is singular, which means that interesting is going to be singular as well. So just look back at that table, uh, find the singular word for moment, the singular word for interesting and put them together. Um, so it's going to be interesny moment. Uh, next up, we have serious moments. So this is going to be uh, plural. So you're just going to need seriously in the plural and moment in the plural. And it's going to be seriously momently. We have interesny moment and seriously momently. Next, we have interesting documents, another plural. Um, so interesting is going to change here to interesny. Interesting documentary. Last up, we've got serious document. In the singular, it's going to be seriously document. Seriously document. Interesting moment, seriously momentary. Interesting documentary and seriously moment. Oh, sorry, seriously document. All right, so things are going to get interesting now. We've got some feminine nouns um, and adjectives which agree with them. So as you can see above the adjectives, it says feminine now. Uh, and that just basically means that the ending of the adjective has been changed so that now it would describe a feminine noun. Um, so basically, when you're learning nouns, um, I'm going to do another lesson on this, on how to identify masculine, feminine and neuter nouns. Um, but some of them you're just going to have to learn which which is which so that you know 
how it changes and which adjectival form applies to it. Um, so that's a lot of maybe confusing words, uh, but it will become clear the more the more we dive into this. So I just want this to be a quick introduction and a brief overview um, to the to the whole concept and to the words and forms. OK, so here we have a gazeta. The stress is falling on the E and it's going to be pronounced gazeta, gazeta, gazeta. Um, and then in the plural, we've got gazietli, gazietli. Uh, so you might notice that in the masculine, right here with in the singular nominative form, um, there wasn't there wasn't this hyphen. So the masculine stem is the masculine noun, if that makes sense. So basically, how nouns and adjectives change in Russian is that they have this stem. The stem is like the beginning of the word and the endings which you add on to the stem will be how you know that it's changing and what it's changing to. So in, for instance, we had mamient and dokument. Those are just going to be the stems. Uh, so it's quite simple and straightforward with masculine nouns. The word is the stem. Um, so feminine nouns is where it gets a bit more complicated because there's usually just going to be one letter on the end which you're going to take off and then that's the stem that's left. It's gaziet. So, for instance, when you want to make gazeta plural, you don't say gazeta i, you say gazietli. Um, and then same with devachka. So, uh, hopefully that's clear. <laughs> So we've got gazeta, gazetli, and then the next word is devachka, meaning girl, devachka, devachka. So here the ch really does sound like a ch, devachka, and the o sounds like an a because the stress falls on the e. <laughs> um, yeah, you're just going to have to mem like remember um, where the stress falls and how how words are pronounced. Unfortunately, there's not very clear rules uh, with stress. Um, you kind of just have to learn the stress of every single word, um, which is another difficult thing about Russian. OK, so in the singular, it's dievachka, dievachka. And in the plural, it's dievachki, dievachki. OK, um, now another difficult grammar rule I'm sorry, there's lots more to come. Russian is not an easy language. So here's another spelling rule we have. Um, basically, I've noted down at the bottom of the slide, we've got U is replaced by a softer E after the letters Z, Ch, Sh, 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 G, K and H. This is just because it's easier to say Ki, Dievac Ki, than it would be to say Dievac Kui, Kui. Those are quite difficult to pronounce um, when they're adjacent to each other. So it goes from devachka to devachki. This is something that we will come across time and time again, and it will become more obvious the more you you see it. So don't worry too much. Uh, that's just a spelling rule that you should note down and just keep in mind. But I'll try to flag it up whenever we come across it. So again, we've got those same adjectives uh, that we just went through with the masculine nouns, seriously and interestingly, but you will notice that they've got different endings. Uh, so we've got seriosnaya, seriosnaya, seriosnaya. Uh, and then the plural is going to be the same, thankfully. It's quite, quite a useful thing in the nominative. The plural is the same for all of the genders. So, seriosnaya, seriosnaya, interesnaya, interesnaya. Okay, now we're going to practice putting them together. So, how would you say serious newspapers? So, the word for newspaper is gazeta, and you're going to want to take off that last letter and add on an i. Seriosnaya, gazetli, seriosnaya, gazetli. Interesting girls, another plural. Just remember that grammar, uh, that spelling rule, sorry. So it's going to be interesnia dievachki. Interesnia dievachki. And then we've got interesting newspaper. So just remember it's not going to be interesnia anymore. You're going to want to change it to 
интересная. Интересная газета. Um, and then lastly, we've got Serious Girl. Again, it's going to be Серьезная. Серьезная девочка. Серьезная девочка. Okay, Серьезные газеты. Интересные девочки. Интересная газета. Серьезная девочка. All right. So finally, we have our last gender to come across. It's going to be neuter. Now, this usually refers to objects, um, although it can kind of refer to uh, animal or insect or some other kind of animate nouns. But right now, we're going to focus on objects. OK, um, again, the adjective is going to have a different ending uh, when it's referring to a neuter noun. So here we have the word for place and it's pronounced Miesta. The stress is on the E, miesta. So the O sounds like an A. Miesta, miesta. And then the plural is going to be a bit different to the feminine and uh, masculine nouns that we just went through. It's going to turn to an A. Miesta, miesta. There's very little difference in pronunciation. They pretty much sound the same. Miesta, miesta. OK, um, and again, you'll notice that the stem is not the word it has. It, you take off the last letter and then you change that last letter, um, like with the feminine nouns. Uh, and now we have Zdanie, Zdanie, building, Zdanie, Zdanie, Zdanie. Uh, so that's the singular form, Zdanie. And then we've got the plural. Uh, which changes to zdania. Now, this is another spelling rule that you're going to want to note down and remember. Um, so with these kind of neuter nouns, when you've got the e y endings, um, usually, as you can see with miesta, the ending is going to be a, but because you can't, for some reason in Russian, you can't put E and then A. It can't be like Z, D, A, N, E, A. It has to be Ya to distinguish between the last sounds because those endings, as I said, are really important and you need to be able to understand what what they sound like and it needs to be clear. So um, it doesn't go Zdania, it goes down like it's not written Zdania, it's written Zdania so that it's really clear for people when they're speaking. Um, so that's just another thing you'll have to remember is that when when it would usually be going to a, ah, if it ends in an e year, then it would go to ya ah instead. Um, and now on to the adjectives. So the ending is going to be o year, novo year, novo year, and interesting year. However, it's pronounced more like um, I mean, it's very similar to the feminine adjectives that we just went through. So we had interesnaya and seriosnaya, uh, and it's going to be really similar uh, the way that you pronounce it. So here we have novaya, novaya, interesnaya, interesnaya. That's just a very subtle kind of. Some people do pronounce it more like interesnaya, interesnaya, but usually it just sounds interesnaya. <clears throat> and then, as you'll see again, the plurals are just the same, thankfully. Nor vuya, interesnia. Uh, okay. So we're just going to practice putting those together. Here we have new place. So place, remember, was miesta. Miesta. So how would you say new place? I'm going to reveal the answer now. It is nor vuya, miesta. Nor vuya, miesta. OK, um, it's quite easy to remember the endings for neuter adjectives because <clears throat> it essentially points out like how you identify them. So neuter adjectives usually end in an O or an E. Uh, and those are the two letters that you just pop on the end of the adjective there. So no voy ye. Um, so miesta ends with O, obviously zdania ended with E. Um, and those are the only I think they're the, yeah, they're the only kinds of neuter nouns that you have. So that's kind of a clue and kind of an easy way to remember. Novoye miesta. Then we have interesting places. Uh, so that O is going to change to an A. Interesnia miesta. 
интересное место. And then we've got new buildings. Do you remember the plural for building? It was not the A, it was an Y. Новые здания. Новые здания. Новые здания. Новые здания. Hmm, новые здания. Okay, and then interesting building is going to be интересное здание. Each, and это очень интересное здание. This is a very interesting building. Интересное здание. So this is just um, a quick overview of the adjectives that we just went through so that you have them all in the, in the same place. Um, so you'll see the stems are the consonants and then the U and the I kratkaya. So the thing that looks like a B and an I and then the weird backwards N with a symbol over it um, in the masculine form. That's going to be the ending for for all adjectives. They all end with this U. Um, so it's quite easy to recognize them. Um, so you've got seriously, 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 interestingly, 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 interestingly. And then lastly, novy, 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 novy. Okay, uh, we will go over this in more detail in later lessons, so don't worry too much if you're a bit confused at the moment because things just get clearer the more you learn. Okay, next we have a little bit of a task for you to do. Um, so on the right, I have a list of nouns, uh, and then in the brackets there, I've written N F F F N M M M. That just stands stands for neuter, feminine, and masculine, uh, just to help you with deciding what kind of ending to put on the adjective to make it agree. Um, so on the left, we've got our adjectives. Um, we've got krasny, 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 meaning red. Um, Starry, starly, which is old. Starry, starly. Uh, then we've got chiestly, chiestly, clean or clear, chiestly. Then we've got tolstly, tolstly. Uh, and in case you're wondering, uh, that is related to Tolstoy. Um, his last name basically meant fat. Um, and a lot of the Russian authors, their last names uh, have real, real meanings. Um, so Tolstoy, fat. Lyubimui, 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 favorite. Prekrasny, 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 meaning beautiful. And then lastly, we've got silny, silny, silny. And again, you'll notice that we have the soft sign there. That just changes the sound of the L a tiny bit. It's quite hard to describe. It's sort of softer and more like a like a rolling L, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like sil silni 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 um, instead of like silni sil sil silni. Okay, onto the nouns. We've got a diela meaning business or affairs. You might be familiar with uh, the common greeting kaktila, uh, meaning how, how, is, how are your affairs, basically. Um, diela, diela. <clears throat> then we've got machina, 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 meaning car. Uh, next up, it's vaina, vaina. So that changes, that i kratkaya there, it changes the sound of the o. Um, it will often be transliterated, uh, which means put into the Latin alphabet, as V-O-I-N-A. So it's pronounced vai, vaina, vaina, <clears throat> and the accent is on the A, vaina. Um, Tolstoy's book, uh, War and Peace, is vaina i mir, uh, just if you're interested. <laughs> um, and then we've got the word for a country, which is strana. Accent on the first A, strana, strana. Then nieba, nieba, meaning sky. Next it's brat, brat, for brother, brat. Uh, and then we have magazine, magazine. The accent is on the last vowel, magazine, magazine, 
meaning shop. And then lastly, we have soldat with the accent on the A, making the first O sound like another A. <laughs> um, don't ask me why. <laughs> Russian, Russian just loves to have these rules um, that are kind of confusing. Okay, so soldat, soldat, soldat. Okay. So here's just a quick exercise for you to do. Um, you can pause the video and then just try to get all of those agreeing. So make sure that the endings uh, correlate correctly to the gender of the noun. So we have firstly, we have new car. You'll remember that that was feminine, machina. Uh, so yeah, before doing this task, I would recommend trying to memorize that list of nouns and adjectives that I just showed you <clears throat> so that you'll be able to do this off the top of your head. So we've got machina and the adjective for new. Uh, together that would be novaya machina, novaya machina. And red sky, um, hopefully you remember krasny, krasny is red. And then sky is neuter, so it's going to go to Krasnaya Neva. Krasnaya Neva. <clears throat> uh, next we've got strong soldier. Uh, so remember that little pronunciation rule of seal, kind of roll the L. And then together with soldier, it's going to be seal me because it's masculine. Seal me soldat. Seal me soldat. Fat brother, this is another masculine, so fat will just stay the same uh, as how we just saw it. It's going to be tolsty brat, tolsty brat. Okay, next up we have serious business. Remember business was diela, which is a neuter noun. So what's that going to go to? It's going to go to seriosnaya diela, seriosnaya diela, ser Yoznaya Diela. Uh, next we have beautiful country, so that's going to be uh, feminine and it's going to be Prekrasnaya Strana. Prekrasnaya Strana. Prekrasnaya Strana. Okay, favorite shop. Funny little L U sound. Lubimli. 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 Magazine, you buy me magazine, you buy me ga magazine, you buy me magazine, you buy me magazine. And then old war, we've got staraya vaina, staraya vaina, staraya vaina. All right. All right, so that concludes the learning part of today's lesson. Now I'm just going to show you some useful online resources and books and stuff to help you with your Russian language learning journey. Uh, so first we have the reverso conjugator. This just tells you um, how words change. Uh, it's a topic that we haven't really gone into great detail in today. So uh, it's kind of for future reference, uh, but it's going to be very useful um, in the future if you decide to continue learning Russian. Next, it's Open Russian Dictionary. Uh, this is a great res resource because it tells you where the stress lands in the words and not many, not many places do that really. Um, you won't see the stress in like online news articles or in books or, you know, it's quite difficult to learn the stress. It usually only appears in dictionaries and sometimes, I mean, it doesn't, it's not shown in like Google Translate or anything. So this is a really useful um, resource for seeing where the stress lands in the conjugations and declensions of the words. Um, those are kind of some big words that I've just used, but hopefully in the future, if you decide to come back to this, then, then we'll have gone through that and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. So these are kind of more future references because at the moment um, we're just kind of focusing on the basics. Uh, so then we've got Deep L Translate. This is just kind of an upgrade from Google Translate and it's really useful for translating full sentences because it picks up on that um, grammar that sometimes Google just messes up. Um, and lastly, we've got masterrussian.com. This is what I used to learn my first kind of few words and structures uh, in Russian when I was like 13, so that's 10 years ago now. Um, but it's a really, really wonderful resource. Um, 
and it's got links to a lot of other great resources uh, which is very helpful and a lot of you know lists of nouns and verbs which I love um, so I've, I found that really helpful uh, so hopefully you'll find that helpful too so next we have a list of online resources for focusing on oral comprehension. That means the listening aspect of a language. Um, and this is just so essential. I can't stress, the, stress enough the importance of getting used to hearing Russian spoken by, other, by native speakers. Um, so when I was living in Russia, I would turn on the radio every morning and listen to it for about half an hour. Um, and it just advanced my Russian so much, even more so than, than even living in the country because I was constantly routinely listening to people speak and you know even if you're living in a country it doesn't mean that necessarily you're going to talk to people every day and spend hours like trudging through trying to trying to learn this language um so it's i just i just think it's so important to listen um and it's often kind of overlooked when people are learning languages in school which i don't understand um because it's it's the best way people always say it's the best way to learn a language is to be immersed in it. But when you can't immerse yourself in a country or go to a country, then the next best thing is the radio or uh, audiobooks or something. So here I've posted a link to the app that I use. Um, my favorite channels are Commerçant FM, that's K-O-M-M-E-R-S-A-N-T, um, all written in Cyrillic, Commerçant. Uh, then there's also Echa Maskvi, um, that's Echa or echo, which is like echo, and then muskvui. That's just muskvui with the ui on the end. <clears throat> um, so hopefully that will be useful and you won't have many problems with that, even if you just want to listen for 10 minutes a day. Um, if you're really serious about learning the Russian language, then I would absolutely recommend you to do that. Uh, so here we have audio knigi pa genre. That just means uh, audio um, audiobooks by genre. And then it says slushayam online, we, which means we listen online. <laughs> um, this is kind of, I guess, for more advanced uh, students of Russian because the whole the whole website is in Russian, so it can be hard to navigate. But I have posted here with the smaller bullet points links directly to children's audiobooks. Um, so hopefully those won't be too complex. Um, and you can adjust the speed on the audiobook by uh, sliding the mouse along this button. It says Squarest, Squarest, that's S-K-O-R-O-S-T and then soft sign, Squarest. Um, so hopefully that could make it easier for you to understand what they're saying. Um, so yeah, if you just want to listen to any of those, uh, that would be really useful. Then another one, that's just another link to a, uh, an online platform that has audiobooks. Um, and then Arzamas, lastly, is uh, kind of, it's a website that has links to lots of online lectures and podcasts in Russian. But again, it, it's in uh, Russian, so it might not be useful for you at the moment. Um, I'm just posting all these as kind of like a if you want to come back to this at some point when you've got more of a grasp on the Russian language, uh, then these could be useful for you. Um, but I have posted that or uh, that smaller bullet point below Arzamas, and that says Dietskaya Komnata Arzamas. That just means the children's section. Um, and they have some like cartoons which you could try to try to find and play if you think that would be helpful. So next up are my top three recommendations for uh, language learning, Russian language learning books. Um, in the left, top left, we have Using Russian. Um, this is really useful uh, as like a reference guide. It kind of points out difficult things, difficult aspects of Russian grammar, which is essentially all of it, but <laughs> it's very useful <clears throat> and uh, clear in its, in its format. And also it tells you idiomatic expressions. Um, so that's just stuff that doesn't translate literally. Um, and yeah, it's just got lots of really useful insights into the Russian language. Um, however, out of these three, I would say that the one on the top right is the absolute most essential guide to Russian. 
It's by Terence Wade. It's called A Comprehensive Russian Grammar. And it is essentially what I'm using to structure these lessons. I'm just going off what it says in the book um, and kind of building exercises around that um, because it's a brilliant reference guide, takes you through all of the uh, all of the nooks and crannies in the Russian grammar um, and it just does it so succinctly and effectively. So I'm a huge fan of this book. Um, it does come with a workbook uh, which you can order separately or alongside it, although I I'm not as huge a fan of the workbook as I am of the reference guide, um, the Russian grammar, just because I think, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's my personal opinion and maybe you'll find the workbook really helpful, um, but you know, if you want to keep your budget lower, then I would just recommend this primarily, the Russian grammar. <clears throat> and then lastly here we have the big silver book of Russian verbs. Um, so this is a really great resource as well because it has all of the conjugations in the of, the, of verbs in the present tense, the past tense, conditional, subjunctive, future, and then it also tells you, um, <clears throat> which is something that I find really useful, it tells you the type of conjugation that they belong to, which is something that we'll go over when I do my lesson on verbs. Um, so it tells you that and it tells you which is... Uh, how they're used in sentences and verbs that are related to it and stuff. So it's it's really good, very comprehensive um, and a useful resource for beginners. Um, and I think, oh yeah, so <clears throat> this is just the final slide of today's lesson. And it's just an overview of the lessons that I will be doing them and the structure that I'm gonna that I'm gonna approach this series with. So today we've done the introduction to Russian, where we looked at um, nouns and adjectives in the nominative case and some useful resources, and we took a quick look at uh, gender of nouns as well. So my next lesson is going to be verbs, and we're going to learn how to conjugate verbs um, and how to say I I don't do something where they don't listen, they don't eat. Um, and so on and so forth. Then after that, we're going to have nouns. Um, again, we're going to just dive more into cases and what that's all about, the gender of nouns uh, and some other details. And yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these right now, but that's a general overview of, of how this is going to pan out. So I hope that you've decided to join me on this journey um, of learning Russian from scratch. Um, and I really hope that this has been useful for you. If you have any questions or concerns or anything that you would like me to do differently, anything that you don't understand or, or anything, any answers to the tasks that you would like me to check, then please, please, please post in the comments and I will be more than happy to answer any, any questions. Um, so yeah, thank you very much and I hope you have a great day. All right, bye.